Vive coding is ruining a generation of developers. Threads posts, Reddit rants, senior engineers all complaining that juniors can't code without ChatGPT holding their hands. That's what everyone keeps saying. And honestly, they're not wrong. I've interviewed tons of candidates who built entire portfolio projects with AI and couldn't even explain a single line of their own code. You see, the engineers over at Anthropic, the company that built Claude and Claude Code, writes 90% of their code with AI. And in fact, 90% of Claude Code itself was written by Claude Code. So what's going on? Are the best engineers in the world shipping just garbage AI slop? Or do they know something about using these AI tools that everyone else doesn't? In this video, I figured out what that something is and it completely changed my work and how I think about AI coding. About a year ago, I was really skeptical about AI coding tools. You know, I'm a staff software engineer at Meta and I've been doing this job for a really long time. And every time I tried Cursor or ChatGPT for coding, it felt off. I felt like I was babysitting a junior who kept making the same mistakes, constantly losing context, forgetting what I told it five minutes ago. And I ended up just using it for boilerplate, maybe generating some tests, but for anything that was like real or serious coding, I would end up just writing it myself. But then recently I watched a talk from Boris Chenry, the creator of Cloud Code at Anthropic. And after that video, everything just clicked. The way their engineers use AI is fundamentally different from how everyone else is using it. They don't treat it like a code generator, they treat it like a collaborator. They argue with it, they question it, they use it to think and not just type some random prompts. That's when I realized I've been using these AI tools kind of completely wrong. And then I really invested myself learning Claude code and kind of changing my approach and high level thinking. Now 90% of my coding workflows involve AI. And this is at large tech companies like Meta. But you know what? I've never been more productive. I'm more productive because AI is making me into a better engineer. So let me show you what I mean. For most people, a typical AI workflow may look something like this. You start building something, you get stuck. So you prompt, you know, ChatGPT or something for a solution. It spits out some bunch of code, you copy it, it works, and you move on. The thing is, you didn't learn anything here, but hey, the feature has shipped, so why does it matter? But then something breaks and you're staring at this code that you don't understand, the AI is not helping you for whatever reason, and you just don't even know where to start to ask follow-up questions. Basically, you're staring at a problem and then you get frustrated and you give up and you're just stuck and you don't know what to do. And I'm sure many of you have experienced this. And I actually call this exact flow tutorial hell 2.0. The old tutorial hell was watch videos or read some articles, follow along, feel pretty smart about it, and then try to build it on your own and realize that you've actually learned and retained nothing. And look, I, I get it. When the deadline is tomorrow, and of course you're gonna just copy that code. You know, I've done it, everyone has done it. But if that's your entire strategy, you're not going to become a better engineer. And here's the uncomfortable truth. These copy paste engineers are about to get very cheap and very dumb very quickly. <laughs> there is a saying about AI making you stupid and it's 100% true if you're not using it correctly. These tools are just gonna get better and better over time. And people who are not mindful over this, they're gonna just eventually lose control of their thinking, just outsource it to AI. So in the future, the question isn't whether AI will change engineering, it's whether you'll be the one directing the AI or the one that will be replaced by it. So what are the alternatives? What separates engineers who are thriving with AI from the ones who are actually getting worse by using it day in and day out? I think the difference is what the end goal is. I think the main difference here is those that are thriving from AI are trying to get something that's totally different from the ones who are just using it and moving on. Most people use AI to get the code, but in my opinion, the best engineers are using AI to get deeper understanding of the code. You know, think about it. If you got like a very senior engineer sitting right next to you, let's say you had John Carmack right next to you. He has, you know, insane knowledge and wisdom. You wouldn't just sit there and ask him, hey, write me this random feature and then walk away. <laughs> Of course not, right? You would pepper him with questions. You would make that opportunity worth it. You would watch how he thinks, try to understand him. You would try to soak up as much knowledge from him. 
And in my opinion, that's how you should use AI to actually learn. The code itself shouldn't always be the goal. The understanding should be the goal. The code is just a reflection and an artifact of the understanding that you gain. So I'm gonna show you these kind of like four principles or practices that I incorporate to my workflows and it really changed my kind of stance on AI coding. But the fourth tip that I'm gonna share, no one really talks about, so make sure you stick around to understand. All right, so let's talk about how I actually do AI coding. I use Cloud Code mainly, and when I first open Cloud Code, I don't immediately start building things. I usually have this conversation session. I think out loud with the AI. So here's an example of what it could look like. So I won't say, build me a messaging system for this service. I'll, I'll say something like, I'm trying to add a messaging system before we code anything, what are your opinions here? What kind of architecture should we use? What would you recommend for a system that needs to handle like 10 million daily transactions? And here, Cloud will come back with multiple options. It'll come back with trade-offs from each ask and also follow up with clarifying questions about the infrastructure and the kind of overall code base. Then I'll have further conversations with it, like wouldn't WebSockets be overkill here, for example? What are some of the considerations should we have to scale this? That's a conversation. It's not just like a simple prompt. You know, one of Anthropic's engineers described their internal process like this. Instead of diving in, I'll say, search around, figure out how we do it. Report back with two to three options. Don't start the work yet. And this conversation before a single line of code is where the real learning is happening. You're not just getting a solution, you're mapping up the problem space in your head and with the AI, and that's just the beginning. So that's part one of the process, having conversation and building understanding first. The second is reading everything. <laughs> when the AI generates the code, you need to read every single line. Do not just skim it, right? And you need to really question it. Why are they using a callback here instead of like use memo? What does this regex actually do? Walk me through it. Why are you catching these specific errors? Sometimes the AI isn't perfect. It may get some things right, it may get some things wrong. Both of those instances, it's a good opportunity for you to review and learn from the mistakes that the AI is making or the gaps in your knowledge that you have. So it's always worth questioning everything until you have a true understanding of the AI code that is being written. Now, this sounds incredibly slow. I know you vibe coders who believe that you shouldn't look at any of the code is probably yelling at me right now. But actually, in my opinion, this is much faster and it's not even close because you know what's really slow? Debugging some code that you have no understanding in three weeks later at like 2 a.m. when it breaks in production. And then you gotta figure out some way to re-architecture the whole thing and rebuild the whole damn thing. That's just the waste of time. And that will always happen if you don't understand what is being pushed to prod. The third thing, in my opinion, that you should do with AI coding is building a second brain. This is kind of interesting, but all I'm saying is you should index things. You should build little context indexes in your local or wherever, you know, with a dot sync or whatever. So what I do is after every significant session of AI coding, I have Claude create me a summary or update a skill or update some rules. And it's for me to review later or reference later. But more importantly, it's also for Claude to reference later. It's that missing secret sauce, in my opinion, that AI coding struggles with, which is having domain understanding of your code and your projects and, and just like how things should actually work. You need to capture that and keep it locally. Now, the fourth thing, which I think is really interesting, is that with Claude code, it's so easy to learn from everyone else's code. <laughs> so let me explain a little bit. At Meta, we have a ginormous code base. We have abstraction levels on abstraction levels. And when you want to dig in, well, that's like a week worth of deep dives just to understand the code flows. But with AI, that's so much easier now. You can ask AI to create you a full summary of that code base, create like UMLs and like diagrams on how things work, help you find opportunities to optimize certain things. With AI, you can just deep dive into anything so easily. This is like a superpower that has been unlocked. Previously, these kind of like deep dives was only reserved when you absolutely needed to do it. You had to fix a gnarly bug or there's some weird optimization that needs to happen. So all of these things, this explorations, there was a huge cost to it. 
But with AI now, you can do that kind of exploration very easily. Claude can instantly pull out relevant code, explain it digestibly, and then you can rabbit hole into anything that you want. And in this video, I mentioned how important it is to for you to keep this learning mindset, use AI to keep getting better at it. But the crazy thing is now the entire code base is just right there for you to learn. So these are like my four high level like concepts for AI coding. Now I know what some of you are thinking, shouldn't I be learning like fundamentals and stuff without AI first? Isn't all of this just cheating? My take on this has changed over time. Previously, I even had this opinion that juniors should just not use AI to code. But recently my take has changed. The way I kind of think about it is, for example, you wouldn't really learn carpentry these days by practicing without any of the tools. I know there's different thoughts on this. I do some woodworking myself, but in my opinion, you should be learning how to use these tools as you're learning as well. You know, AI is this new set of tools for software engineers. And yes, fundamental still matter. You still need to know data structures and algorithms, but the way you should learn those fundamentals now, I think AI might be the best solution and the best teacher that you've ever had. It's infinitely patient, always available and willing to explain things 17 different ways until it just makes sense for you. The key thing here is that you need to want it. You need to ask it to help you accelerate your learning, not just replace your learning. There's a huge difference between write me binary search versus explain how binary search works. It's just night and day, right? One creates a pattern of dependence of the AI. The other might give you the understanding and knowledge to be that mythical 10X engineer. So it's really important to have this mindset shift when you're working with these AI tools. Here's the brutal truth. We're all going to use AI for coding. Every software engineer in the future will use it. At some point, not using AI coding will be like not using Google search for research. <laughs> you can, but you're gonna be just outpaced by everyone who does. And the real divide is that some people will use AI and get worse, and some people will use AI and get dramatically better. Same tools, completely different outcomes. And the difference isn't really intelligence. It's really the intention of how you're using it, right? If you use AI to avoid all of your thinking, you'll slowly lose the ability to think. But if you use AI to enhance your thinking, you will just become so much better in the long run. All of this thing that I'm talking about is actually happening right now. And you get to choose and be very intentional on how you wanna use all of these things. Next time you open an AI coding tool, try something different, you know? Don't start with build me X. Start with, I want to build X. Have the conversation, understand the problem sets, and then try building it. And when the code appears, read it, actually read it, question it. Make sure you could explain every line to someone else. That's the practice. That's the iteration that you need to do to get better instead of just like worse and worse and worse and be laughed at as like a vibe coder. Remember the question from the beginning is how do the best engineers in the world use AI without becoming worse at coding? Now you know. Now I know this video was pretty philosophical. It's mainly like a mindset and understanding, but I'm actually creating a full series on my actual Claude code workflow that will work at large tech companies like Meta, Google, and Amazon, and etc. And this series is something that I wish existed when I was first getting started out and trying to invest time into learning these things, just actual workflows that took me from skeptic to shipping like 90% of my code with AI. You know, I'm gonna go nitty gritties, like even the basic setup stuff, all the way to like my advanced workflows. At the end of it, you'll learn how to orchestrate multiple agents in parallel. I don't like to use this analogy, but a lot of people say you're kind of going to be like an EM that like manages all these agents. But I like to think of myself as like, like a StarCraft player that's managing multiple like commands and then like checking in on it and context switching. That's kind of how my workflow actually looks like. I have multiple instances of Claude code and I'm operating multiple things all at the same time. One thing I will say on the side is like, you kind of miss this state of flow with AI because you're kind of like prompting and waiting. But if you have these multiple contexts, I've been kind of able to recreate that by managing these like multiple instances. It's a different, it's like playing StarCraft. It really is. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you want to go even deeper, I started a new newsletter called Push to Prod and all of the workflows and my writing, I'm going to be putting into there. It's going to be practical content, like I mentioned, very similar to this channel. And the goal of that newsletter is for you to become an AI native engineer. 
and building your own software engineering career. So links in the description, please subscribe. Let me know what you think. And if you like this video, check out my software engineering playlist. I'll put it right here. And you know, the, before I go, the game has changed. It's changing constantly. You need to learn this stuff. Like if you're a software engineer, you need to know how to use these tools. Now you should have a good understanding of how you should be thinking about this stuff. Until I see you guys on the next video, I hope you guys enjoyed.